can't believe it didn't fucking. <laughs> right, it's recorded, man. Okay, three, two, one. Welcome back to the barber shop, the virtual barber shop, and and you're getting a kind of a, a view of the virtual barber shop this week as we are recording both the audio and the video um, for release on YouTube and our usual um, audio outlets. Uh, we are into episode, what is this now, episode 8? It feels like it should be episode 9, maybe even episode 10. Um, on account of the fact that we did record an episode following our WrestleMania predictions episode with Dan Barnstall. Well, I say we did record it, we actually didn't record it. Because oh. um, although we had oh, the discussion oh, oh. and we had Dan in the barber shop, uh, Mad Dog uh, done did a bit of a botch. And uh, it didn't actually hit the record button, or rather, hit the record button twice, and yeah. thus not actually. Oh, 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 oh. That episode. And it, I think it might have been our best ever episode as well. It was really good. It was groundbreaking. Um, there were some topics there that no one had ever spoken about ever. It, we, we, you know, you were you were so eloquent that night. You, I've never known you like lament so eloquently before and obviously i i called an audible the week before to get dan onto the show and dan very kindly came and gave us his time so i want to say thank you to dan and apologize to dan for the fact the recording was lost um yeah i can just say that i literally went and slept in the doghouse that like that, that night last <laughs> and, honestly i felt so bad and um yeah so um carl yes we've man. had so we've actually had two weeks since uh, WrestleMania now, and we've actually, I think, had three weeks since we last caught up on our super fat to super fit trip. So, yeah. and I know, and most people, I mean, a lot of our listeners won't know this because a lot of our listeners are out in the States. Um, last week, the week after WrestleMania, UK had a major change in lockdown rules, right? And yeah, that yeah. is men, you've been able to do the thing that you've been gagging, like, Chomp it at the bit to get out and get doing. So come on, what's going on? Super fat, super fit, Carl, the keyboard warrior, Atlas. Yeah, man, I'll give you my update because actually, like you said, it, I, you know, so this week I've got something newsworthy to share. Um, yes, the restrictions lifted to the point where we were allowed back to indoor gyms. And I know that I've said several times that, you know, it's one of those things when it happens, um, I want to get in there. And, uh, you know, I wanted to prove that I wasn't just whistling Dixie, um, that I was, you know, going to keep to that promise. And I signed up. I have got a new gym membership at my new gym, um, and I started la well, at the time of recording this last Thursday. So I did Thursday and Friday, and then I was away for the weekend, so I couldn't do anything on the weekend. But I've been back in Monday and Tuesday, and with my work um, schedule, the way I think I'm going to play this is I'm going to do Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday every week, plus uh, occasional weekend trips when my um, timetable would allow for it. Um, so I'm, you know, I'm super happy to be back in and I have done it pretty much exactly what I laid out to you when we talked about it. I got in there and I just reacquainted myself with. The, yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. I, I got in and had some fun. Um, I tried out some stuff, um, lots and lots of upper body stuff, because obviously that's where. Like you say, you know, it's the show off muscles, isn't it? And that's what they also they're the, fe they're the feel good muscles. They make you yeah. feel good when you pump them. They make you feel good when you vasculate them and get them bigger and get. And also, they don't hurt as bad as hitting the lower back and the and the legs. And yeah. it is important that we do legs and back. But if you've been out the gym for a while, you don't want to hit the system on week one and be walking like uh, like you crapped yourself for three days after your second session. Unfortunately, on that note, as you brought it up, I have had some issues with my lower back and not because of the gym. I think because of something else. Um, I don't know what it is. Um, I, you know, I'm hoping to get it checked out soon. Um, but yeah, so working out the back, not really an option at the moment. But I've been in there. I've been doing shoulders. I've been doing chest. I've been doing arms. Um, as well as that, I've thrown in some cardio because I said to you, now that it's looking like the restriction, the, the roadmap is going to stick and we're heading in that direction. It looks like it's very likely that come the summer, um, you know, shows will be back on. And so now, like you've said before, it's good to have just one goal to kind of focus in on. Yeah. Um, and so I've retweaked my goals a little bit. I've said, like, yes, I still want to lose weight. Yes, I still want to look good and put on some of that those show off muscles. But I'm more interested at the moment in rebuilding my stamina, as I said. Like the last thing you the last thing you want right is to have your first show 
and yeah. be gas from your entrance and just stick the joint out it, absolutely and and you know uh, there was a point and i've said it on my social media is that um there was a point where after after having covid you know i am asthmatic i you know i have had covid i've had pneumonia i've had all those things um and there was a point where you know i was getting breathless going up and down the stairs and i was genuinely worried thinking if i don't get better or back to where i was then i may have to just say i can't you know i it's don't in, i don't want to be it's worth no it's worth noting here that i've known you work through god knows there was the show two it's gonna be probably three year, new years back now probably two years two new years ago oh yeah oh yeah it was probably when you had pneumonia you, you had bronchitis, I actually, and i didn't you fought through it you didn't know you just thought oh, i've got a bit of a chest infection you went all the way down to uh, butlins butlins bogner yeah and, and you had I pneumonia James and you work James, right. and that's going to be a, you know that's going to be a like, working James Mason is always a kind of a he's going to put you through his paces, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think he took it easy on me, um, but yeah, you know, yes, I have done that, but I don't want to be one of those guys who uh, outstays his welcome, stinks the joint out, knows he can't bring it, and still comes and st- takes someone's spot. That's not who I am. That's not what I want to be. So I was a bit kind of like I just want to rebuild my stamina. So. Day one, I hit the, um, is it the elliptical, the cross trainer, you know, the thing that works Yeah, yeah, cross trainer, yeah. Now, I like that because it's like running, but it's soft on my knees. Yeah, um, low impact know, guy, back and knees and ankles, big, yeah, they're perfect. Big guys like us, you know, we need to be careful of that sort of thing. So I'm on there, and the first day, it was, I spent so much time doing the, the weights because I was enjoying it, that I just did 10 minutes at the end of my session, just a little bit of cardio, just as kind of like a, a warm down. But I said to myself, right, well, if I can do 10 minutes of constant motion, Next time I want to do 15 sure. and I hit it. And then the next day or the next, not it was the, a day, the day after that. I was like, I want to do 20. And I messaged you. I was like, mad dog, I've done it. I've hit yeah, 20. Yeah, you did. You sent me a message with the picture and the yeah, I was well chuffed, man. And and the Thursday, the, the fourth day, I was like, right, I'm going to go for 25. And man, the sweat was streaming off me. <laughs> but I was, I was in there for 25 minutes on that, on that machine. And um, I was really, really pleased because as I said, although it is a light impact workout to have, 25 minutes of constant motion at a decent pace. It wasn't like yeah, I was just walking. I was, you know, a, a jogging or running pace at points. Um, gave me a sense of uh, kind of like well-being of like, you know, I think I'm going to be okay if I can keep up this up <laughs> and, and you know, bring some of that energy into the ring. I think I'm going to be all right. And this was very exciting. Um, obviously, we are very fortunate to be fairly local to um, a wrestling gym. Um, which has now opened up for private rentals. And, and I was you got able... in for a couple of bumps, didn't you? I got in and I took a few bumps. I hit the ropes and man, the, the hitting the ropes was a shock to the system because, oh, uh, you know, you forget, to you, forget you, you build up a callus, don't you? You've you got to build up an immunity to it. When so the you first, first start, you get scurfed like every session, right? It doesn't matter if you wear a jumper, you take your shirt off and your wife or your missus or whoever is like, what have you done to yourself? Are they whipping you down there? It is really bad at the first. But then eventually, yeah, yeah. eventually you, you can hit the ropes all night long. And It was just nice just to, to be in that atmosphere and to hit the buckles and to hit the ropes and to take a few bumps. And, um, you know, genuinely, I think the thing that I find with bumps that shocks me when I when I haven't done it for such a long time is how much it, it, it rattles my arms. Because obviously right. you strike the mat, you strike the mat as hard as you can. You know, break falls and judo is much the same. So if anyone's done any martial arts, they'll know what I'm talking about. A break fall. Um, and it always shocks me how much it rattles through my arms and my shoulders at first. But again, you build up that callus, you build up that immunity. Um, so yeah, I got in there, did a few th- bits and pieces, did a few moves, did a few flips off onto the crash mats and stuff. And it was just enough. And I did that. I did an hour at the gym and then went straight down. So it was, again, it was nice to kind of already have a bit of a pump and a sweat on and then go and get in the ring. And but it just also kind of... remember, you know, when you hit the, you know, last year when we were hitting the ropes and bumping a lot, you were probably a good, even though I think maybe during this last lockdown, you've maybe put a little bit back on, not a lot, but maybe a little bit on your own admission. You haven't been weighing yourself, right? And I think you still look just as trim as you did at the start of it, because you, you, you still send each other's pictures, right? But we were bumping around last summer. I, I, know, I know I was 15 kilos heavier than I am now, and I'm planning on being at least another 10. You know, if I can manage it, I want to be another 15 kilos lighter. That would be the dream, but at least 10 by June. Um, that, for me, that's 25 kilos lighter. And that's yeah, the yeah. thing I struggle with bumping. You know, best part of 150 kilos at one point two years ago, I'd hit the mat, I'd hit the canvas and just be like, oh, I can't believe I've got to get back up. 
<laughs> there was genuinely a point, wasn't there, where I, again, holding my hands up, I think at my heaviest, I was somewhere between 20 and 21 stone. And now I think I'm somewhere still between that kind of 17 and 18 mark, probably closer to 18 now, because I've kind of got myself down to about 17 and a half. And as you say, I have, you know, I, you know, lock, uh, there was the Easter half term. And this you know, lockdown no was of... hard as well, man. It wasn't like the first one where we were in springtime and summertime. This was hard. We started January 1st. We all had winter weight on. We all had post Christmas blues, post post New Year's blues. You, especially in your industry, you work in education. You didn't have a fucking clue what was going on with your jobs and how to teach and all the stress. And my wife works in the same um, industry as you. She's a teacher as well. So, and I know how stressful it was. And if you're anything like me, diets, exercise, stress. Things give, right? And in little ways. And the things that you were really tight on, you become a little bit loose on. And it's just enough to let bad habits in. But I don't know about you, but what I've found now that the springs hit and lockdowns are released, I've actually taken those loose and nuts and I've tightened them right back up again. Yeah. I mean, I've really, and I'm planning on, and I'm screwing them right in. I'm just, yeah, I'm dialing it in now. Yeah. I might not be quite as strict as you, but I, you know, I've said on the podcast before that routine is something that definitely i know how has a positive impact so going back to work i'm back on the fasting you know proper um i don't eat until midday i stop eating at a good a good time in the evening um and i'm back on a healthy lunch i'm you know my, my partner um she makes um uh what are they called um uh, not weight watchers what's the other one seven world Slimming well. She makes slimming well dinners, and I, you know, I have that as well. So, and the snacking is, I'm, I'm choosing healthier things when I need it. Um, yeah, and the macros of Slimming World are very like are on point for you know the macros of Slimming World. The way they work that out, you know, the way their sins works is nonsense, right? I don't understand it. Their calorie, the way their sins and their calories, I think it's designed to sell certain foods in Iceland. But let's not get too cynical or tin for hat here. The actual philosophy on how to build a meal is what I said to you, isn't it? Like yeah. three fists worth of food, because that's how yeah. big your stomach's going to be. One fist of carbs, one fist of protein, one fist of fiber, you know? Yeah. And you can play with that a little bit in any sort of ratio you want, but that's the trifecta. And if you've yeah. basically got that on your main meal, you're laughing. And, and you know, and alongside that with the fluids as well, you know, I've, I've um, upped my water intake and back on the black coffee and the green tea combinations throughout Which the, routine you know, helps to... with that, right? Going Absolutely. into work at a certain time, having that cup of tea, that cup of coffee, having a break at 11 and filling your water bottle up routine, those, those staggered routine points through the, yeah, man. Yeah. So yeah, gen genuinely, I'm pleased with the trajectory that I'm on. Um, you know, and I'm not beating myself up. I've made some positive changes and I actually feel really good. And I do enjoy going to the gym. I, you know, I look forward to it and I've kind of worked it into my daily routine and I'm hitting about an hour when I go. So it's like That's a good. solid hour of an exercise. And I, you know, I don't, I'm not one of these people that sits on the machine and looks at his phone. Um, right. I'll do as much as I train to failure um, is something that I've picked up from you. I like to train until I can't lift anymore. And then I'll have a 60 second, two minute break or whatever. And I'll try and do a lot, another little bit. And I'm changing the weights to try and shock my system a little bit. You know, I'm, I'm going for light weights for 10 reps and then upping the weight to see what I can do as my yeah. five rep max and my three rep max and things like that. I mean, I, you know, I'm a novice with this, but at least I'm in there but having a like go. Like I said to you, move around for the next, like for the next two or three weeks until you've got the discipline of just going until the routine is set. Don't panic about program. People are going to say this is wrong, but I think like the, the biggest thing about going to the gym, right, and about getting on this getting on this road, isn't about programs and nutrient plans, and it's about having the desire to want to change, and then finding the willpower to commit to it. And actually, that second part, most people have got the desire. If you ask most people, they're like, even it's skinny people, fat people. Skinny people, you ask them, they want to be toned up with some abs or some muscles. Big fat guys, they want to be a little bit trimmer or a little bit slimmer or not have the paunches. Effectively, we all want to look a little bit nicer when we've got our clothes off. Right? Yeah. That's, yeah whether yeah. you're skinny or fat, right? unless you're a, a model or an athlete, you want to look a little bit ni nicer when you're naked. <laughs> You want to stand, you want to get out of the shower, look in the mirror and not think, oh, what, you fat yeah. or skinny git, right? <laughs> now, the, that's actually not hard to achieve if you have the desire and the commitment. 
because you can get programming which will help you get there. The hard thing is taking the desire and turning it into willpower. So don't rush into getting a program or rush into like, oh, I've got to do this many sets or I've got to do that because that that leads to self-defeat. Yeah. What you actually want to do is do what you're doing now. Find a couple of things that you're enjoying. Hit them as hard as you want. Move from machine to machine. Try loads of different things. But once you're like, hey, Mad Dog, I'm going three times a week, every week. And I've been for four weeks. And I'm now wandering around like a sore dick in the wind. I, I now need to sort this shit out because now I'm wandering around randomly. And actually... I'm now four weeks in and I'm committed and random isn't cutting it. Now I want to, you know, now I want to progress forward. Yeah. And that's what like I said to you forward. It's about, I think it's a little bit about knowing yourself as well, because I've said to you that my mindset is very much based on my environment. When I'm at home, I'm, I'm chilling or I'm be, I'm doing my hobbies or I'm recording with you or something like that. When I'm at work, I'm working flat out. When I'm in the gym, I'm in that mindset of yeah, I've paid my money. I've drove here. I'm in my gear. I've got the headphones on. Yeah. This is my time. I need to make the most of it. And um, yeah, genuinely, I, I feel like I am so far. It's still early days, but I, you know, I, I've got no intentions of giving it up um, anytime soon. So um, yeah, amazing, I, man. we've got that window now, haven't we? We've kind of got that. We're what we call, recording in April. We've yeah. got that kind of the June 21st roadmap restrictions will lift. And from that point on, it looks like we might have some dates coming in. I still um, think so early summers. I still, I personally still think early summer's a bit keen. I know we've got a couple of June dates, and I'm keen, and I'm happy to do them. I still feel it's a bit keen. I'm still a bit dubious about they're happening. It'll only take one little outbreak, the Brazilian or Swedish or some sort of variant, to hit one of our ports to rush yeah. through, and everyone get a little bit paranoid and shows the shutdown. We're already seeing that with people with things where they were getting gigs and various things starting to book up tours in the beginning of the summer, and they're already pushing them out to September or early 2022. So. Um, yeah, and, but it's that glimmer of hope that certainly, you know, hopefully, even, you know, certainly, hopefully, at least some of the outdoor events will happen during the summer. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's something to look forward to. So it's, um, and it's also something to aim for, isn't it? It's like I've got that, that window now to be, as, and I've said on my social media, and again, I don't make promises lightly. So it's that kind of, I made a promise to myself and to anyone that follows me, I want to be the best possible version of me I can be by the that's time it, I'm back right? in that ring. I don't want to rush back. Just, I don't want to no. rush back and because I, I did the same thing. We both said this. We want to go back being absolutely and if I rush back and we're and we're doing shows and we're not quite there yet, then I haven't achieved what I promised I would do. And and that's not just actually about the whole um fat to fit thing and being and get my stamina and things like that up. That also includes things like I'm I'm ordering um you you know, we have debuted um, our new tag gear but we've only yep. really had the opportunity to wear it once that's right but that is we've got our new tag gear but i'm also ordering some new um singles gear and i've updated yep. some of my entrance attire and i've now got some merchandise on the way in fact i'm, I'm hoping by the time recording this um on the gear will have dropped my new merchandise line my new t-shirts line so I, i've started to put things in plug, place plug, plug, on say, the gear go to the on gear have a look carl atlas new t-shirts plug the merch what? plug the merch well, get, get on there and get a Beards t-shirt while you're at it, yeah, because the Beards true. t-shirt's on there, and our new logo is is is, is pretty awesome. So, yeah, get on there. Um, but, yeah, hopefully, if you do follow me my social media, um, I will be sharing the On The Gear announcement as and when it drops. Um, so, yeah, there's things to look forward to and things that I put in place, and it's kind of like making a promise to myself that, yeah, the things are going to be good once we come back. So, but what about you, man? You, know, you you said you've made some big changes. So, like, give give us a rundown of some of the stuff that you've been up to. Like, I've I've well, talked about my journey for a lot a while now. So, well, so I I'm a bit of a night hawk. I'm a bit of a night owl. You know this about me. I'm I'm kind of I'm I'm always up late. Always have been for years and years and years. And but I suffer from insomnia. Um, had it really bad when I was at university about twenty odd years. Well, yeah, best part of twenty years ago, maybe eighteen, nineteen years ago. And um, got medicated for it. And I hate the medicine. And I started suffering from insomnia again when my dad was poorly. Uh, when he was, when he, my dad was dying. It started to really struggle with sleep. And it's, it, my insomnia is always stress related. You know, my, my partner lost her uncle two weeks before I lost my stepdad. And obviously there was the run up to it and the lockdown. I couldn't get down there. You couldn't get in the hospital. There was so much. And Laura's trying to work from home and the kid. I... And I just thought, and I just stopped sleeping for more than 
I'd maybe get three hours. I might skip a night. I might get four hours. And that's kind of how my insomnia goes. And um, my my employers are really actually really great. And I was having a personal review, and we were talking about you know things that are, what's going on and how I'm coping with my dad being ill. And I said and I said to them, I'm I'm not sleeping, and it's you know obviously your work starts to suffer, home life suffers, the gym suffers. One of the things I was trying to do was I was burning the candle at both ends. I was hitting the gym super hard when my dad was ill because it was the only outlet I had. You couldn't go anywhere. I couldn't visit him in hospital. We weren't allowed to go. I couldn't cross the county line. So even if we were allowed in the hospital, I couldn't drive down there because I live in Hampshire and they live in Dorset. Uh, so I'm hitting the gym every night. Uh, but I wasn't eating right. I wasn't sleeping right. Anyway, so my boss gets in touch with our HR people, our HR consultants. And I get myself put onto a sleep clinic. It's about four weeks ago. And I do the typical thing with this sort of shit, honestly. I roll my eyes. It's self-help. It's hippy dippy crap. It's you know the, the the same response everyone usually has, right? But I thought, well, the boss is paying for it. They've been kind enough to sort it out for me, which your boss, you know, they don't have to. It's a pretty pretty kind gesture. Um, and it, you know, it wasn't super expensive, but it still cost money. And um, I said, you know what? What have I got to lose? I'm not sleeping. It can't get any worse. So I'll go in with an open mind, and actually. Very helpful. Lots of little things. And it's simple shit, which isn't it always the case with these sort of things that when someone else points it out, it's easy to see it. But when you're sat on your own trying to figure it out, you're like, why can't I sleep? Why am I losing weight? And then someone says, well, you're drinking Monster three times a day and eating McDonald's. Cut that shit out and you'll probably lose weight. Do you know what I mean? Like, you're not... So, and the biggest thing that this, that this um, consultant gave us, she said, keep a sleep diary. And she gave us the categories for the sleep diary. And I'm very performance orientated with the body, with the you know, weightlifting and numbers. And my job, I work in IT, which is all KPI driven and performance driven. So actually having something where it's like, right, when did you last have a meal? Yes. You know, so yesterday, when was your last meal? When was your last caffeine drink? When was your last drink? When did you get in bed? When did you fall asleep? How many times did you wake up? Just shit like that. It's like a long list of stuff, right? And I started keeping it religiously. Every morning I'd get up before I started work and I'd fill it, fill it all in. And I noticed that I wasn't eating till 9, 30, 10 o'clock at night. Every day. Average, 9, 30, 10 o'clock. And then I'm not sleeping till 1, 2 o'clock. And sometimes I wouldn't eat till 10, 30. And sometimes I'd have a cup of coffee at 7 o'clock because... I'd pick the kids up from school, I'd feed them, I'd give them a bath, put them to bed, need a coffee, go to the gym, come back from, come back in from the gym, cook some food, eat some food, then try to relax. And when you actually start looking at the patterns and you're like, oh, I'm doing this to myself. I'm ramping my body up with caffeine and adrenaline and endorphins and I'm cranking it up at half past eight at night. Yeah. And I'm not winding down off that. And that's without pre-workout. You know what I'm like in the gym. I don't need pre, you know me, I don't need pre to get hyperactive. The ADHD, <laughs> my ADHD does that all on its own, you know? So, <laughs> you know, I crank it up to the max and then it takes three or four hours to dial it down. And, and we talked about this kind of weeks ago, didn't we? You also have that kind of, you said this, you have that, um, what did you call it? Procrastination revenge? Yeah, sleep revenge procrastination. So, so it's you that double kind of, up, yeah. It's so that mentality, the, isn't it? Yeah, of, this is up, my like, time. And I don't well, want yeah, to give so it I come up. in from the gym, which is now work because it's stress release. I've cooked and I've got to wash up, put some washing on. Now it's my time. But it's 11 o'clock at night. You shouldn't be yeah. starting your time at 11 o'clock. You should be going right. to fucking bed. So that was the first thing. Work out what you're doing. Second thing was, she said, set yourself a bedtime. Now, this makes sense, right? I have two small children. Yeah, yeah. they have bedtimes and guess what and you know this you've got small children if they don't go to bed at the time that i know they, they need to they are bastards the next day right because yeah they're cranky right now why are we any different with i might be 39 years old but i still need to get like what? so anyway this it kind of makes sense when it's pointed out to you so i set myself a bedtime of 12 o'clock because i get up about half past seven quarter to eight I'm thinking seven and a half hours, I can cope with that. That's better than what I'm doing at the moment, 12 o'clock. So I started that, 12 o'clock, I was getting about 8, 8.15. Um, and then the third week, she drops a bombshell. Right, I want you to reduce your bedtime. Whatever you said it to last week, you're going to bring it down one hour, and you're going to get up one hour earlier. 
Now that, though, for me, has been a real spark. You've seen this. Anyone who follows me on Facebook in the last week has seen it. It's been a firecracker underneath me because I'm going to bed at 11 o'clock. I am falling asleep by about 10 past 11. Not quite like some nights I've been like, oh, but other times it's taken a couple of minutes, right? But I am up at quarter past six. Quarter past six, I am up. I am out the front door at 25 past. I am dressed out the front door and I am running up the road to the park to do a lap around the park. And then I'm hitting the gym. And actually, because it means that in the afternoon, I actually get to spend some time with my kids. I go yeah, pick them up man. from school. I'm not rushing off the gym. I eat the same time they do. I ate at 5.30. And I didn't eat a lot because I didn't feel particularly hungry because I had and I wasn't panicking about going to the gym. And I'm winding down. Yeah. It's chilling and out. You hear you hear it all the time, these PTs and these famous trainers and things saying, you know, you've got to shock the system. You've got to change something up. And, and you know, you've changed your whole routine. You've not just changed your sleep. You've moved when you're eating. You've moved when you're training. And so your body I've been doing react. the same shit for years and wondering why I'm getting the exact same results. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, so anyway, man, oh, man, God, what... I'm so I'm so pleased for you. Like sleep is massive. Um, I, you know, it's, time, you... Is the, time is the teller, though, isn't it? It's going to take me six weeks. We said this back in I, when we do an IF, and I know I. But the thing here's the thing, though. You know what? This journey with you has taught me so much about myself, and I think hopefully it has about you as well. Because we set ourselves some targets, right? And just through sheer willpower and a little bit of friendship and camaraderie, a little bit of hold each other true. Yeah. And not want to let each other down a little bit. And not want to let ourselves down and our family and the people we promise. But also, I know I can do it. Yeah. I know I can it, change my habits. Because I've done it some, I did it six months ago with you. There is I know something I can in do that. It. I, think, I think when you're training and it's just you and you're only really accountable to you, the only person you're giving up on is you. And yeah. I think actually it's easy to do that because you're only disappointing one person and it's yourself. And, and you can I think tell you yourself, you're not, and you can excuse, you can lie to yourself and tell yourself you're not, not disappointed. Yeah. Give yourself all the reasons in the world. Oh yeah, but I was ill or I'll do it next year or. Yeah. But actually like, you know, because I'm not just doing it for me, I'm doing it for the team and all, you know, like you say, I am doing it for me, but it's not just about me yeah. now. Um, yeah, I think you're right. It does. It keeps me on the straight and narrow. And I, you know, we'll, we'll wrap up the fact to fit thing and move on in a minute. But the sleep thing, I just wanted to add my little ten pence worth in. You know um, that I've also made a little bit of a change in that area. Yeah. Because uh, I finally bought a new bed. Um, so I, <laughs> I haven't said this on the podcast, but I've been sleeping on um, uh, two mattresses on the floor for quite a while because. We had a, a metal frame bed, and after time, you know, these things bow. I'm not a light, I'm not a light sack of potatoes, am I? So, um, and so I was sloping, and I was finding it was hurting my back, and it was creaking and keeping me up. So we ditched the frame, put the matches on the floor, and I said, "Well, when I've got some money, I'll buy a bed." Well, you know, jump forward a couple of years. <laughs> um, I finally ordered a bed, brand new mattress. Slept like a dream last night. Um, and I'm hoping it will have uh, knock-on benefits to my back and my posture and things like that as well. So, um, yeah, I've also made a change in that area as well. So, no more hurricane runners onto the mattress with um, with, with little poops. No, I've, uh, Faye has already <laughs> put a ban on that. We're not allowed anywhere near the bed for wrestling. So, I might so have to keep. Should. She's been sleeping on the floor, bless her, for the last three years. <laughs> well, I might have to keep the memory foam topper and sling it in the garden and bump him around on that occasionally. <laughs> right. Anyway. It, as much as it's been a real positive chat um, and nice to start off on that note, we should probably talk about the fact that we did a prediction league. Yeah. Um, we're not going to harp on too much about Mania because we're two weeks removed from it now and everyone else has talked about it to death. But we'll do a quick roundup. Um, so we did the predictions league and Dan, bless him, he did keep the, the uh, score for us. Yep. I won the Saturday, the night one. You did. He won night Overall. two. And overall. And, and overall, which is to be expected. But out of the pair of us, I won. And that's all that really matters to me. Um, so, <laughs> um, I, I couldn't pick a win. To be fair, right? Give me my dues, though. The people I picked, like they should have won their matches. When you look back through, like the Riot Squad should have won that match. Yeah, that's probably, arguably, that's probably, yeah. That's probably the only one, actually. <laughs> But yeah, you know, it, you couldn't. You, the only thing you could pick is your nose, as you said, and uh, yeah. yeah, you know, so I'm, I, it's great because I, what I said was I was probably the one that uh, consumes the least 
of the product and i still managed to get quite a few right so i was pleased with that um look let's just keep it dead 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 simple let's just each pick maybe our worst and best moment across the two nights yeah. um and maybe just unpick that a little bit um because i know that you want to move on to um doing a little bit of uh fantasy rebooking of mania yeah. um which is quite interesting i think um so i uh, right i mean no surprises that my two fat tops were the ones that i picked and they were the workers matches they were the wrestlers wrestlers matches um we called it in the predictions it was cesaro versus uh, rollins and um owens versus zane but the shocker knowing my history and knowing how much of a mark i am for both zane and owens and indeed their feud um my favorite of the two was cesaro and rollins um i think surprise man i think it was a cleaner match um i think it was um a, just all round better i think it told a better story the, i think it was the psychology the structure the psychology was clean and they yeah. took their time and we discussed this last week and i know we didn't record it and i'm not going over it ad infinitum because we did last week and we haven't got the time tonight but you said this yourself the sammy and ko match it felt pacey it like, felt rushed and, and what I said about it was it's disappointing because they built it up on the history of these guys have wrestled each other since time immemorial. And they, you know, they're, they're, they've done the whole... They know like, each other like they know no one else. Yeah, they feuded for years. And finally, they're going to get the chance to go one-on-one -on -one at WrestleMania. Um, and for me, that... For, and I said, like, my, one of my big bud bears with WrestleMania is that I don't like when WrestleMania is where feuds start i think wrestlemania is where feuds go to end. end yeah and if this was supposed to be the kind of the be all do like this is it now we're not we're not going to have they owens missed. versus zane yeah, ever missed. again it didn't feel like a finale um it, it it was good it felt like it ended really suddenly um and it just wasn't as spectacular as their prior efforts now i did talk a little bit and like you said i'm not gonna harp on too long but i did talk about the fact that yeah they've got some mileage on their bodies now um there was a lot to get on at wrestlemania um and you know they were just uh, react you know getting in there in front of a crowd again and one of the things i really Even liked was with how all that being said though they still should have just and maybe that maybe it wasn't their fault maybe they had to get everything in and the road agent was sat there backstage going sorry guys you've got eight not 12 maybe yeah. but it definitely sp Pacing wise, they it was rushed. Yeah, and there wasn't one of those big oh my god moments. Like no. you know, Owens has kind of almost started to make a bit of a trend for himself of having those oh my god moments. And if you're going to have one, have it at Mania yeah. and have you're it at the first the Mania package, in two years. If you're not going to do, if you're not going to do the package par driver with Sammy, who are you going to do it with? Yeah, and why tease it? Um, yeah. So yeah, there was there was a few little things in it that just it just brought it down a notch in my estimation enough for me to go, do you know what? If they do, have that, if they do have that match to end all matches in at, um, at backlash, why are they having it at backlash? Why are they not having it at mania? Yeah. And again, that's that, that, that is the root of my issue with, with, with don't, you know, they did it with um, Eddie and Ray, didn't they? They yeah. started Eddie and Ray's feud at WrestleMania and it was a good match. But then they went on to have better ones. I know they tied in some awful feud with the custody of Dominic. But putting that aside, they had better ring quality matches later down the line. Um, and so I just don't like when WrestleMania feels like it's the start of something. Um, in terms of my worst moments, do you know what? Genuinely, um, I overall enjoyed both night one and night two. Um, I, you know, and even some of the stuff that people are lamenting about, you know, on the message boards and on social medias and things, I, I still quite enjoyed. Um, I don't think it's going to come as any surprise. I think the girls tag team turmoil was probably my lowest moment. Um, it was like you said, it, multi man, multi woman, multi person. It doesn't matter. Those types of matches can either sink or swim. And I don't they either think take going... over and there's something that you talk about for the next 30 years, TLC, or. Yeah. And this was just one of those. Um, and, you know, we predicted it. We called it in the predictions because, again, it felt like a lot of cobbled together teams uh, and it had too much time given to it. Um, Which is where I think that Riot should have won just because it legitimises them as an actual team. It's like one of the very few actual teams. They could have then gone to night two, picked the straps up and formed the start of a new 
a new tag league. In the end, we've ended up with Sh- Shayna and Nia keeping. Forgot why? Why have why have those two third generation, second generation? Sorry, two second generation. You know, ladies that that that, that never really have made that big jump up to that like big bright bright bold moment. Why not? Give them the. I don't understand if the, I don't. I don't understand what if they were no. going to do that. Why didn't they just let the riots take do the job? Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, it just it was an odd one for me. But um, but then on the flip side of that, no, you my go favorite, favorite match is the ladies' match. Both of them. You know, if I had to pick between them, if I had to pick between them, I'd, I think I'd pick night one. Just on yeah. the sheer, on the, I think just for the moment, the moment they shared two black women, main carding, main eventing, night one. Oh, come on, that's I, that's that's I, amazing. And, I, the I, ma- I, and on top of the fact that it's an amazing moment, the match itself, the match itself stands up. Yeah, and again, we talked about this with Dan, and I'll, I'll reiterate it in and paraphrase it in short terms. Um, I said in the run-up that I didn't get it. I don't, I, you know, I thought it was a rushed build for um, Bianca, um, and I didn't understand it. Um, I got into it. I, I, you know, I joined the hype train during that match. The, the both girls put it all out there. The st- stuff that they were doing was good. It was crisp. It was it, it was innovative. Um, it told a good story. Uh, it built and it ended in the right way for me, and it totally made sense. Uh, but I will stick to my guns about this. I think the true test in the pudding will be what they do with Bianca now and who she feuds with and how she does against someone else. And neither of um, us have watched Raw in the last two weeks. Cause no, I've heard things and, you know, seen snippets and stuff, but um, I, I, and I'm keen to keep an eye on it and I do kind of want to see what they do at backlash. Um, so yeah, but yeah, I do think with Bianca, it will be a test of time. It, w- it might be one of those things where, you know, we had the feel good moment, kind of like Kofi, you know, they put the belt on him at WrestleMania. It was a feel-good moment. And then, you know, a couple of months later, they dobbed him out. I hope not. I, I hope, hope that not. doesn't happen. Yeah, I always hope that doesn't it's happen. It's the same hope... question I've got over Lashley as well. What are they going to do with Lashley now? Like, that's the same question I have of Lashley. So, yeah. Yeah, well, I, I, actually, do, I do want I do to give it on the answer. Oh, go on. Oh, no, go on. I, don't know. I don't know for certain. Um, but Cesaro is getting a shot, I believe, possibly at Roman. About fucking time too, right? Because I don't think he's going to win it, but, but he the needs fact to start, he's in the mix. He needs to start making it. He needs to, yeah. He needs to start becoming part of that equation. I don't yeah. know what he did. I guess he upset someone backstage and has now noshed someone off. Well, I just, I mean, you or look he's at just the taking his time. In front, of, or he's just you look time. at the reaction in front of the live crowd. I think they were stu- They would have been stupid not to capitalize oh, on it. Yeah, like. Oh come on! They, they they've now got to run behind this because yeah. he's not just a wrestler's favorite; he's everyone's favorite. So you know the 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 Swiss cyborg is just, and he's so good as well. The thing is, yeah. he, he's just oh, I don't know. But I'll do before we move on, and I do want to move on because, but I do want to give an honourable mention to what is probably my after the two girls matches, the the the, the both both of the type 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 matches because I really enjoyed the Rhea versus Asuka match. That match was it's was a classic slow build and just boiled, simmered and simmered and simmered and then boiled away. Amazing match. Amazing. Just amazing. But I want to give an honourable mention to the to the um, the, the Fiend and Randy. Mo- but it goes back to what you were saying. And we covered this last week and it wasn't recorded. So we keep saying this. But, and I said this then as well. It was another thing started, not ended. Yeah. Another yeah. thing with a question mark left over it. But for a mo- if you're looking for mania moments... That's a mania yeah. moment. <laughs> that, yeah, that, I, that was that was awesome. And, and I, you know, I told you, I, I told you it was going to be about bliss. Yeah, yeah well, this is what I was going to say. Like, I, my initial kind of like watching it live reaction was, oh man, why didn't the fiend win? Because you know, you think you know he needs it, but then you take into consideration that this storyline is not about the fiend; it's about bliss. Um, and if you think of it from that point of view, it all perfectly made sense. Um, and she is by far one of the best things going on on that pro uh, that That's programming awesome. at the moment. She she's got I, her own I, segment now into the firehouse, I think. And I genuinely look forward to whatever she's going to do next. Um, and it keeps me on my toes and keeps me guessing. And I and I like that. And I said to I said to you and Dan um, when we did the non-record um, that. That's good booking. Good booking is 
keeps my intrigue up, yep. and she is keeping my intrigue up. I want to know what's going to happen. I haven't had that for years. Of like, I haven't wanted to turn it on and go, "What happened on Raw?" Probably since two thousand and nine, two thousand and ten, and part of that's we've talked about this before. We have talked about this. Part of that's us. Part of that's us moving on with our lives, having other things going on, and priorities. But part of it is also just being interested in the storylines. And yeah. having interesting things going on. So, on that note, though, which does actually glove into or dovetail into, you said, you said, I'm going to quote you here, almost <laughs> word for word, this mania doesn't really tickle my pickle. And it got <laughs> me thinking, and since you said that, it got me thinking. I thought, well, what would tickle your pickle? So, yeah. with that in mind, fantasy booking. Now, well, I want to put some stipulations on this. So, sti- we, we make a stipulation match here. Well, the stipulations are that it, we have to be putting on this year's main. You have to be putting on this year's mania. The main stars of this year are still the main stars, right? Mm-hmm. Drew, Braun, etc., etc. Um, yeah. What do you change to tickle your? What is it that? What is it that other manias have had in the past? What is it that would then go? That's for me. That tickle like yes. I want to see Braun versus, or I want to see Roman in a, like, what tickles the pickle? And I know and it doesn't have to be a full two-night card, but just, because let's face it, Mania is always, wrestling is one of those things where there's something for everyone. We talked about it, didn't we? Uh, WrestleMania 15 and what have you, and I'm like, well, not 15, 20, uh, no, 50, yeah, not 15, 25? 17. 17, that's it. And I'm like, yeah, but some of the matches aren't for me. But we discussed that, didn't we? That, that, like that's the thing about wrestling. That's the joy of it. You don't have to have every card match for you to be excited. So let's uh, let's let, we've only got about twenty minutes left. So let's focus in. If there was going to be like three matches mm. to tickle the pickle, okay. Well, I tell you what. Let me do a rundown of the ones that I keep and not change at all. Okay. So I would keep Cesaro versus Rollins. Obviously, right. I would keep Owens versus Zayn. However, I would give them more time. Um, would you, I would would keep, you put a sti- would you put a stipulation? Would you give them more freedom? Would you encourage them to go backstage? Would you encourage them to go high flying? Would you put a stipulation around that? Would you want to see a cage match or a death brawl or see if you're going to lean into their past history and acknowledge that smart marks have followed them all the way up? Their most memorable match from history was the well, I, in my opinion others may disagree was their ladder war that they had in ring of honor right right i would have brought the ladder war back okay. um i would have brought that back it didn't in, in and i don't think necessarily it would have been to retrieve something i think it would have been just like a kind of a ladders are legal type situation right. where all of the gimmicks are ladders um and just let them go nuts with ladders because i know that those two could be super creative with that um and ladders, it, and ladders tickle your pickle too. They tickle my pickle, and so that was my, that was the stipulation. So yeah, I think I bring back the ladder war for Kevin and um, Sammy. Um, I would keep. No, no, I wouldn't. I would, I would go back to what I said at Rumble. I wanted spear versus spear, Roman versus Edge, one on one. I don't think especially now that we know the result and the creative and the direction they were wanting to go with making Roman look super dominant by having him pin both um, Brian and Edge. Um, you could still have Roman go over, but I would be happier seeing the legend versus the kit, the head of the table um, and spear versus spear and telling that story. Um, I think I, it would have felt- yeah, I have to say in, 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 you know, I don't want this to be like, Oh, we, we agree on everything. Cause I like it when we're antagonistic. Um, but I have to agree, but only because, and not because I've got anything against Daniel Bryan, just because I fucking hate triple threat matches. I just don't. And it, they, and there's, and I want to shout out on this one though. How amazing was Jey Uso in that match? Yeah, absolutely. Unsung yeah, yeah. hero in that match. That guy worked his bollocks off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, and don't get me wrong. It was a good match for what it was, but we're booking my mania yeah, now, okay, so yeah, yeah. Uh, I would have had a big singles match, Legend versus Head of the no Table. Jay um, so, no Daniel Bryan, no outside interference, just well, two guys going for it, right? Jay and Paul, I think, were in, are integral to the Roman character. Okay. So I think they would need to be out there in some fashion, but I, you know, I maybe would have 
Again, <laughs> when you're climb, when you're the underdog, when you're edge and you're climbing the mountain, giving Jay the shot, giving Paul the shot, and then running with Roman makes exciting telly. Like, yeah. It makes exciting. It's exciting, you know. Yeah. Um. So, you you said like, who would you put Braun on with? Um. I'd keep Randy and the Fiend. I don't know if I said that. That would stick. I'd keep the women's matches. Rhea and Asuka, they did a, a hell of a job. And Bianca and Sasha, they did a hell of a job. Do you know what? I'd even keep the celebrity match because Bad Bunny, I think, you know, there's no no newsworthy note here of, like, he pulled it out of the bag and he surprised everyone. And it was entertaining for what it was. Um, I would have scrapped the whole AJ Omos thing. It just didn't wash with me. I wasn't interested. You didn't like that at all, did you? I, no, I did not. I would put AJ, um, I can't remember who's on what brand now. But again, it doesn't mind, matter. You can bring, it's, fantasy you can bring, it's your fantasy booking, so you could bring anyone to face AJ. Yeah, I, you know, if you're not going to have Daniel Bryan in the main event, Daniel Bryan versus AJ's got money written all over it for me. I would Has have that it? match all Has day it? long. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Bring that one in if you're gonna if you need to use AJ elsewhere and um, Daniel elsewhere. That that I would have that singles match. Do you know what actually? I would even have AJ, Daniel, and Riddle in a triple threat for the US title. And wow. then I'd have okay. Sheamus beat Strowman clean. Yes. Okay. Because I, I'm, on, I'm on the Sheamus train. I like Sheamus at the moment. And he would have had a better match. That he would match have had a better match. Riddle, he, I don't think he was happy with. Maybe I'm wrong, no. but he didn't no, look, he didn't fucking said, look happy, did he? <laughs> he said it was kind of. He needed something to do, and putting the US belt on him would made sense. But you could have backpedaled that, give him the big win against Braun, mm -hmm. make him look strong, and then push him back into the scene with Drew or with, mm -hmm. um, you know, Lashley even or whatever. Um, I don't think I'd change Lashley and McIntyre. I think the way it was going, I think that was the only logical conclusion. Um, I don't I like need, I don't. Think I like the result, but I didn't like the match. If I'm honest. No. But mostly because I was catching up on Drew and Lashley and the Hurt Business. And there was loads of really cool things going on with the Hurt Business in the weeks, in, in the six, eight weeks running up to Mania. Loads of really cool things with the tag team, with the Hurt Business. There was loads of really, really, really good matches between Sheamus and Drew. And I <laughs> think at Fastlane, Drew and Sheamus had their Mania match. Mm. They had the match that if they were allowed to face each other at Mania, they would have had at Mania. Holy fuck, was it amazing? Was it awesome? Yeah. And in fact, um, they had another. They had a match on a normal, regular Monday Night Raw. I think it was the first Monday Night Raw of of um of March, and it was it was really good. I, and and I keep saying this, and I know I keep saying this, but Drew does Big Man versus Big Man so well, and if or whoever works with him suddenly gets, in my opinion, the matches get elevated. And you yeah. just see a quality big man. We said this last year as well. Remember, there was two big man versus big man matches. It was Straw. Uh, it was um, Braun Strowman and Brock. And it was um, no Braun and who was it? Braun was on night one, and then night two it was Drew and I can't remember. But we said at the time the Drew match just made it apparent what they'd done wrong the night before. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, for All sure. the things we complained about on the first one, the typical big man versus big man, you shouldn't work like that, you shouldn't do it like that, it's really boring and old-fashioned. Well, they do it completely differently when it's, a, when it's a Drew match. And I think Drew is the next Cena, by the way. I, in my opinion, he's the next big yeah. baby face. I hope so. I certainly hope so. Um, going with the kind of like, um, reshuffling things... Um, because I've scrapped the tag match, maybe do because the, the new day with the champs and with the smack no, it's Raw or SmackDown champs are Ziggler and Rude. Yeah, they they had they had, they had their match on Friday night, right? And they retained. Right? Yeah, but WrestleMania tag champs versus tag champs, yeah. Ziggler and Rude versus the New Day is a good match in anyone's book. In something dirty, something dirty, so they don't drop. I mean, it doesn't even need to be for the. It should. It should be for bragging rights. They've done right. that sort of thing who, before. Who's the be... best? Who's the best champion? To... Yeah, yeah. Who's the you best? could have put booked a, a brief storyline of you know we want to prove who the best tag team are. We're both the champs. Let's and, have a little. Yeah, run and Rude and Ziggler can sell that from the arrogant angle. New Day could sell it from the well. We'll wrestle anyone angle. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I mean, again though, looking at that though, you know, 
it, you're only really reshuffling and retooling a few things, um, which I think speaks to the surprising quality of WrestleMania because we said there was no big star attractions, but actually that ended up being a positive. You said it last week in the non-record, and I agree. And again, I, I know we're bucking the trend here. We're agreeing with each other, but you said it was nice that it wasn't about the old stars and that this mania felt very much, there was no trips, no Undertaker, no one to kind of lean on that kind of nostalgia vibe. It was all the new guys. The only one there that really could be considered um, from Edge. the old school was Edge. But I think he's still current and relevant enough um, that, it, yeah, I mean, maybe in Randy Orton, but Randy Orton's not, Randy old covers, school. Randy's he's covering just, the divide. Yeah, Randy's bridging the divide, isn't he? I think he's got... He was so young. The thing about Randy was he was so unbelievably young during the ruthless aggression and the, the attitude era that he's, you know, he, he has time under his belt. And I think he, he's one of those pair of hands that you put him on the show and he just hold. we talk about how important it is to know where you are on the card and to perform. And I think Randy does that really well. If you put him out first, he does his job. You put him out on the main event, he does his job. You put him out in the middle, he does his job before the break. He does his job after the, I mean, Randy just does his job, right? He just goes out and does, and does what he needs to do wherever he is on the card. But I'm, um, I think that there's a good op like this is where it all begins. This is where a new generation. This is where a whole brand new era and a brand new set of stories. And maybe they're not our stories, but they will be for our kids. You know, our yeah. kids are the, are the age. In a couple of years' time, these people are going to be well established. Drew will have these people that have, have carried their own mania now. They, they've been trusted with their own mania. They're going to do it next year. They're going to do it the year after. By the time they've done it three or four times, they're going to be as good at doing mania as The Rock and Steve Austin and the rest of the guys were back in the day, right? And that's what our kids are going to grow up watching. Yeah. And that's the stories they're going to tell in 20 years' time. Do you remember when? And, yeah, yeah I was a bit too young, but I remember my dad showing me this one. Yeah. They just, that, you know. The only one we haven't talked about is uh, Apollo Crews and Big E. <laughs> well, let's we face it, right? When you go from having mo Saturday night, one of the best moments at the end of it and then you have a nigerian drum match where the drums didn't play any part in it that and was then my some biggest... random latino guy gets up and pretends to be mustafa ali or something yeah like, it's general general something i've forgotten his name already I get, the gimmick, I get the gimmick that he's meant to be some commander general that's like in like it's a little bit but it's a bit kind of um insensitive isn't it like yeah, these guys especially... these these guys make children slaves and make them go and kill people with machetes like it's yeah. a bit it's it was a bit insensitive two steps oh. forward one steps back wasn't it we had the girls main event two colored ladies in the main event Bobby Lashley rocking picked it out Lashley and then we the go time. and announce this gimmick and it's like oh okay um but oh, yeah I, I mean, was like oh my god the the two the two guys in there gave us all they had it was you good can't, you can't but you you can't you can't um you can't Knock the go knock the workers. No, no, no. Creative no. though. I don't know how they said yes to that racist bullshit. Yeah, exactly. Company guys, they don't want to say no, do they? And I do they want, think they want their main, they want their spot at Mania. They don't want to be given away. But that's you some racist about shit. What's man. next for Lashley? I I think what might be next for Lashley is Big E. I think he dropped it dirty so that he's he's safe. And that they can do Lashley versus Big E because let's face it, Lashley you versus Big E is, is yeah, a money match. That's the third it? time you've said that, and the, I wasn't overly, sh I wasn't convinced the first time you said it, but I am hundred percent convinced that doing do, doing the job and going down dirty for uh, Apollo leaves him clean enough. Yeah, that he can then rise up and go. Well, actually, I'm strong enough to take on anyone, and I'm going to go for Lashley. If, I think that works. He needs some. Got... He needs some warm up though. He can't yeah. just go straight for Lashley because Lashley will just eat him. We need to see him build and be convincing as a true top of the card heavyweight. Get some actual wins. Get maybe some wins on Sheamus. Get some wins on some of I the think, other big lumps. I think it's the Cesaro situation. It's nice to see him in the mix. And uh, I think, you know, that will elevate him. And you're right, he won't win it straight away. But I think it will be a proving ground for him. And then they'll do the build. They'll rebuild him. And, re, you know, uh, he needs to be a little bit more intense and a little bit less comedic, I think, to be taken he's seriously as a champion. I think he's starting that. You can't just switch it, can you? Because he has a fan base. So he has to ease out of it slowly. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah. And it's nice that he has really, I think, broken away. Like he did that little bit of entrance with the New Day. But the fact that the, the free bird is basically it looks like it's over, isn't it, really? Yeah, yeah. But I suppose what really, and this will probably be a nice point to wrap up on, is that we're talking about the future of the WWE and it feels like they might actually have a plan finally for building new stars. Um, which, let's face it, people have ragged on about the WWE or oh, they don't build new stars, they don't build anyone. The whole menu was built around new stars. It looks like they're now positioning Cesaro and possibly Big E to have another to, to move into that main event rank. Yep. Um, you know, and they've brought guys like um, Orton and AJ down a peg, given them something creative to do, so that they're you know they're treading water and they're fine, but they're not mixing up in the same combinations all the time. So actually, it's quite exciting, I think. You know, especially if we're not hardcore fans, we don't pr- swallow all the product. But if you are a new fan, like you said, a young fan, and you're watching it now, I think you sh- it's quite an exciting time to be a fan. And um, what, a, what a cast of characters that you have. What a cast of characters. It's, like, you know, I, I, like, I'm, like I said, I'm never, I'm not a big Mark, I'm not a big fan, but what a cast of characters. It's a real, it's a real circus. It's a real, there's so much flavour, so much, I, I look at it, I look at it, I, I look at my son when I sit and watch, and I look at him enjoying it. Yeah. Even if I'm not, I look at him and I look at his face and the way he reacts and the way he gets up and the way he stands up on the sofa and starts headbutting me when he gets excited. You know, it's, you just see him react and just think, yeah, that's how I felt when I saw Hacksaw Jim Duggan and yeah. Rowdy Roddy Piper and the Big Boss Man and you, re- you know, and you know, that's how I felt when I saw those characters. I we ran around the playground going, oh. Because it, because it didn't actually matter if they were the best wrestler or the best product. What mattered was the the circus, the 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 the, the, the characters behind it. So yeah. yeah, I think I think we yeah I think you're right. We're a good place probably to wrap up. We run for for our time tonight. I do want to say um, again, sorry for last week, both to you and Dan. So hopefully Dan's going to listen or watch this. Dan, I'm so sorry, and we are going to get Dan back. Maybe we can get Dan back for Backlash Mania or something. Or yeah. I want to get Dan back for a second episode. So thank you, Dan. We'll save, we'll save him for SummerSlam or something oh, like that. Oh, yeah, that would be a good plan. And we really appreciate everyone that listened. We had the best listenership ever the week running up to Mania. In fact, the three weeks running up to we really appreciate all the new listeners. Absolutely hot really amazing we've started our youtube channel now if you're watching this hello uh, if you're listening to this you can now catch us on youtube we're going to slowly drip feed our back catalog i'm going to be uploading um our video footage every single week going forward and i'm also going to drop at the weekends an old episode into youtube for people who want to catch up on the backlog and maybe don't have access to podcasts or what have you um But you can, as always, you can find us on Spotify, you can find us on iTunes, you can find us on Sounder FM, which is where we release. We're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, we're on Instagram, and we're now on YouTube. Um, And and, and and on thegear.co.uk, you can then go to their wrestling apparel section, search for Beards or Mad Dog or Atlas, and it's official. It happened while we were recording this. Fantastic. My new merch is up. Um, I've made an announcement on my social media, so please go and... Um, you know, it's my birthday this Friday <laughs> at the time of recording this. So the best present you could give me is to get over there, order yourself one of my tees, send me a picture of you wearing it in preparation for when the restrictions lift. I will share it. Um, it will mean the world to me. So please, uh, yeah, get on there and get, get, get yourself some sweet new um, Keyboard Warrior merch. Uh, yeah, look, it's, I uh, echo Mad Dog sentiments. It's, it's, it's been great. Um, you know, I'm glad that the view, the listenership is growing. Hopefully, now moving into viewership as well. Uh, we're going to be looking at new um, exciting projects in the future. So, yeah, keep listening. Keep if we liking, can get to hundred subscribers, subscribers, if we can get to a hundred subscribers in YouTube, Carl, the keyboard warrior Atlas, will give you a tour of that glorious man cave behind him. But not until then. He loves no. showing off. But not until then. A hundred subscribers, and he will give you a tour of his glorious man cave. And just the last little little thing, because you said about the man cave. There's one little item in here. I went down to TK Maxx. They got a bit of a sale on, bro. The epic oh, 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 oh. card game 
reduced to four pounds. Maybe one day we'll, we'll, we'll have to do a, a, an episode where me and you play this game over the <laughs> over the monitor. Uh, yeah, I can't wait to give it a go. It looks good fun. Um, yeah, right. That's going to wrap up episode note. eight, nine, ten, whatever we are. Um, I think, thank you. You know what? I think this is episode thirty-five overall. By the way, bro. Oh, that's a milestone, man. Yeah, man. It's thirty-five episodes, and I'm thirty-five this weekend. That's serendipitous, You man. don't look 35. You've got to be at least 42, mate. Ah! Oh, 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 oh.